you know, my students and I talk about Brianisms. What is a Brianism? It's wacky things that I say to describe different types of situations in a pool game or at the pool table. And one of them is advanced player problems. So I'm going to give you 10 advanced player problems today, but these overlap with intermediate players and beginner players as well. They just happen to be a bigger effect on the game of the advanced player than on the beginner and intermediate player. So let's talk about those 10 things. Number one, underestimating the competition. I see this all the time. You're playing APA or something, you have to spot four games in a race to six. You know this guy hasn't run three balls ever in his life and you're playing below your game because you figure, well, he's not gonna run out on me, I'll just take my time here. Or you play too aggressively because you know that this person is not gonna run out on you. Don't underestimate the competition. Advanced player problem all the time. All of you have done it, advanced players, you do it all the time, make sure you don't do it. Number two, burnout. This is something that advanced players run into more than anybody. Why are they advanced players? Because they practice more than anybody else. They put in more reps. They are obsessed sometimes with practicing. You can burn yourself out before a match, before a game even, just by playing too much, practicing too much. If you've got a big event coming up, don't put in eight hours of practice the day before. Look at elite athletes, a lot of sports. You take off the day before an event. You don't practice too much before the event. Do not let yourself burn out before a match the day before or before you play in a game. Number three, bad equipment. Bad tables, bad cloth, bad levels, you name it. Bad tables hurt good players more than they hurt bad players. They are equalizers. They are major equalizers. I'll give you an example why. If you're a good player, and let's say you're playing this two to get on the one, but the table runs ridiculously that way. You drop the two in the pocket, you expect to be over here on the one, but your cue ball stops here because the table is leaning that way. That's an advanced player problem. The beginner and intermediate player weren't gonna get on the one anyway. So your position play has immediately been neutralized. On top of that, the ability to make that ball has been changed because that pocket is quick. All of a sudden, the intermediate player just needs to make contact with it. It's in the pocket. I played on tables that were like that. The table leaned so much that if you just put a ball in the vicinity, it went in the pocket. That's a problem for advanced players that does not affect the beginner players and the intermediate players as much because they're out of shape anyway. So keep that in mind. Bad equipment, that means bad rails that are affecting your, your bank shots. All of that stuff affects your game. Number four, sharking. Why would sharking affect the advanced player more than any other player? Sharking, take a couple twins. One of them is an APA four and the other is an APA seven. And they're at the table and they're both being equally sharked by somebody. Some guy is just talking too much, too loud, you know, sexy girl over here that, that keeps batting her eyes at him. The seven is affected more than the four for one simple reason. The seven is thinking more. The seven has more going on at the table. He's playing chess and everybody else is playing checkers. If you are an APA seven, you're three, four, five balls ahead in many cases. You know what you're gonna do before you even get to the table in a lot of cases. You have many more decisions to make playing chess than someone is playing checkers. So sharking does affect better players more than it affects weaker players. Once again, the weaker player wasn't going to be out anyway. So who cares if they got sharked? In fact, I always told people, you be careful about sharking low-level players because you might just shark them into making a shot that they were going to miss. But giving someone anything else to think about is basically all sharking is. Here's one more thing to think about while you're shooting. 
whether it's I dropped a cue over there or this person is talking too loud or, or whatever, one more thing to think about is all you need. Again, affects the higher ranked player more than the lower ranked player. Next item, going on tilt. Higher ranked players go on tilt more than lower ranked players. Lower ranked players have less to be upset about. If you don't run balls and you miss on your third ball, you're not as upset as you might be. So <laughs> if you're accustomed to running out and you miss, if you know you're the best in the building and you lose, or you're losing, which is even worse, then tilt is knocking on the door. And if you're the personality type that's going to fall for it and open that door, you are more likely to be affected by it as a higher ranked player than a lower ranked player. Again, the lower rank and intermediate player, it doesn't affect them as much because they weren't going to get as much done in the first place. Next, safeties. I see two things, two problems with higher ranked APA players and league players, other league players. Number one, playing too many safeties. If you're playing safeties against someone who doesn't run out, all you're doing is extending the game. And by extending the game, you give up some of your advantage. You want to run out. If there's a cluster to break up and you don't have a shot, go break up your cluster. If you're playing someone who doesn't run out, why are you playing lockdown safeties trying to get ball in hand? Take care of the table. Clear up the table. Okay? Anybody who's hustled, anybody, especially you old school guys who hustled eight ball, you know very well that we played a lot of games, a lot of games against people for money where we gave them Balls off the table. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you tell a guy, I'm going to take four of your balls off the table after the break. Oh, you're going to take four off? I only have three to make? Yeah, that's it. They break, you take off four balls. They miss because that's what they do. And you run out because there's no balls on the table. Right? So you got to understand, you're playing safeties when there's times that you want this person to get some balls off the table. If they don't run out, what are the odds of their first run out ever being against you? And if it is, what are the odds of that's, cost, that's gonna cost you a match? So don't play too many safeties, but play enough safeties because you don't want to underestimate the person. If they are an unknown, then you need to make sure you're playing D because advanced player problem, you underestimate a lot of people. Playing too quick. Advanced players tend to move around the table quicker. You got an internal shot clock. You get in a rhythm. Okay. But sometimes you need to change your rhythm. All right. Stay in your rhythm when you can. But if things aren't going well for you, slow down. Change your pace. A lot of times that is all you need to get back in the stroke. Another thing, and I talk about this all the time, and I hope you guys pay attention to this, and that is mirroring. Mirroring is when you find yourself copying the person that you're playing. What do I mean by that? You got somebody who's got a bad stroke, they got bad follow through, they got bad speed, timing, everything they do, there's a problem somewhere in there. And you start to take on their problem. This is a bad habit. It happens all the time. It happens to some of us more than others. I tend, when I'm watching somebody, I tend to become a mirror of that person. Sometimes it's very subtle, but sometimes it's extreme. Every one of you has played a weak player that all of a sudden seems to be much better than they were 10 minutes ago before playing you. The reason is they're mirroring up. They're watching what you do. Suddenly, they are not hitting the ball too hard because they see the advanced player. Their speed, they start to mirror that. They stay down on their shots all of a sudden. They're not even conscious that they're doing these things. I've played people that just suddenly played better. I mean, guys that I was evenly matched with, uh, this is a true story. I'm playing with a guy, he owned a pool hall, and we played pretty evenly. We were playing straight pool, and all of a sudden, he's up on me 25, 30 points, and I'm, I don't know what's going on. And I said, Jerry, what, what, what did you do today? He said, oh, I was watching Efren right before you came in on TV. So he's, he's, got his, he's got his computer 
turned on, attached to his television, watching on the screen before I walk in. He's, he's mirroring Efren before we play. This stuff really works. You want to improve your game? Watch some good players play right before your match. But on the other side, make sure that you're not mirroring the weaker players. Talk about this all the time. It's called vicarious exhaustion. One of the things you guys have to remember, beginners, advanced, I don't care who you are, when you run a rack and pool, you are doing a puzzle. And when you are doing a puzzle over and over again, sometimes for an hour, sometimes for two hours, over and over again, you get mentally exhausted. And because of that, you either tire out or you get lazy. And both of those things are bad. So a lot of times when you don't think you need to think as much, you're not gonna put yourself out there to think as much. Hey, I'm not gonna do this puzzle right now. I'm gonna just shoot these in. I'll shoot this with low left and play that one high right and come off of four rails to get on this one instead of playing the best pattern. So keep those things in mind. I hope you found benefit to this video, whether you're an advanced player or not. If you saw yourself in some of these issues, hit me in the comments and let me know. Check out this next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, you got some problems, but <laughs> give us two thumbs down. All right. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.